Bruce Bauer, a Vintage Tech Museum founding member who passed away in 2022, was a curve tracer aficionado and used a curve tracer for many things besides testing semiconductors. I used to kid him that his motto was, if it can't be done in a curve tracer, it isn't worth doing. He found a novel way to test capacitors on the curve tracer. This, this video was made with a Tektronix 577, but the method is applicable to any curve tracer. If you connect a capacitor to a curve tracer with the collector sweep set to AC mode, it displays a loop which does not convey much information other than, than that the device is a capacitor. The operator's guide for the 577 describes a method of measuring capacitance by comparing the size of loops made by different capacitors, but this tells you nothing about leakage. By putting a diode in series with the capacitor, you get a more meaningful trace than a simple loop. The test setup in schematic form looks like this. A capacitor connected directly will be discharged by the output impedance of the collector sweep when the sweep is reduced. But the diode isolates the capacitor from the sweep, leaving it charged, potentially with a lethal voltage on it. A momentary switch is provided to discharge the capacitor. Use this to discharge the capacitor before removing it from the test jig. Use a diode with a peak inverse rating at least as high as the voltage at which the capacitor will be tested. Also, use the cover to protect you from shock. Someone cut out the front of our cover, which allows convenient access to the discharge switch. Set the curve tracer for normal sweep in NPN collector positive mode. Set the horizontal volts per division according to the maximum voltage at which the capacitor will be tested. Set the maximum collector sweep range according to the maximum working voltage of the capacitor. Set the series collector resistor, if your curve tracer has such a setting, to any available value between 1 and 10,000 ohms. For a large value capacitor, you may need to reduce the series resistor later. Set the vertical current per division to 1 milliamp. The step generator is not used, so its setting does not matter. You may need to adjust the vertical sensitivity later. Connect the positive terminal of the capacitor to the cathode of the diode if a polarized capacitor such as an electrolytic is being tested, as shown in the schematic. For non-polarized capacitors, the direction of the capacitor does not matter. Here's a warning. Because there's no path for discharge current back into the curve tracer, the technique may leave the capacitor charged after testing, possibly to a lethal voltage. Therefore, use the momentary switch for a few seconds before removing the capacitor. As you advance the collector sweep, the vertical deflection represents the charging current into the capacitor and the uh, VI characteristic of the diode displaced by the current voltage on the capacitor. If there's any residual vertical deflection, it indicates leakage. And at this point you might increase or decrease the uh, vertical current per division see if there's any leakage. Okay, this is a leaky capacitor. As you increase the collector sweep, of course, you see the vertical deflection, but the vertical part of the line doesn't go to zero, meaning there is leakage current. And you might want to uh, adjust the vertical uh, current for division again to get a more accurate measure of the leakage current. The amount of leakage will vary with the amount of collector sweep and may increase severely near the rated working voltage of the capacitor. Don't exceed the rated working voltage of the capacitor unless you have extras that you want to test for actual working voltage. Exceeding the working voltage may damage the capacitor.